should do a little bonus of physical contact. I'm doing it for Penguins article too. Thank you. Dear Jew in the City, in real life, I'm a neuroscientist who believes that the Torah is true. On TV, I play neurobiologist Amy Farah Fowler, who once noted that although she doesn't object to the concept of a deity, she's baffled by the notion of one that takes attendance. Here's my question. How do I explain the Big Bang Theory to people? I'm not referring to the show. That's simple to explain. To borrow a term from the vernacular, it's legit epic. But rather, how do I convey that the science I've studied fits in with the Jewish beliefs that I hold dear? By the way, big fan of your stuff. Big. Thank you, Dr. Mayim Bialik. Mayim, people often think that science and Judaism don't mix. L'chaim. It worked. Oh my god. It's incredible. It's amazing. That skirt looks even better on me than I realized. Thanks. But you got a little something on your... Here. Take this. Now, where were we? Oh yes, although the Torah doesn't mention a Big Bang, it does agree with the essence of the Big Bang Theory. The universe had a beginning. Or was it a... Would you mind getting the baby? Of course. And can you get the floors while you're at it? But how about the rest of the biblical creation account? Can it fit into a scientific framework? Though there are Orthodox Jews that read the creation account in Genesis literally, many of us believe that it must be understood another way. The great rabbi Maimonides stated in the 12th century that the creation account given in the Torah is not intended to be literal in all its parts. There's a concept discussed by Talmudic commentators that if it doesn't make sense to understand a Torah verse literally, we must look for another meaning. For instance, although the Torah speaks about the hand of God, we don't believe that God has a literal hand, but rather a metaphysical one. So what about the creation story gave rabbis pause for thought even hundreds of years ago regarding its literal meaning? The word day. Because how do we define a day? Sunrise, sunset, swift. Exactly, a day is defined by the sun rising and setting, and yet according to the Torah, the sun wasn't created until day number four. Therefore, there's an approach that says the days of creation weren't 24 hour days, but rather longer time periods during which life slowly evolved in the order listed in Genesis. Plants, then animals, then people. But how about dinosaurs? Where do they fit into the mix? Genesis mentions the creation of Tenenim Gedolim, or giant reptiles, which some believe refer to dinosaurs. As I hope you've seen, believing in science does not preclude a person from believing in Torah, which is very important to know. Because although science is quite effective at explaining how the stars got here, unlike the Torah, it doesn't even attempt to explain the feeling of awe that overcomes us as we gaze up at them. Sincerely yours, Jew in the City.